maybe India maximum. But you don't know what's happening in Indonesia. This new roofing material, like called thatch roofing, that has come out, which is way cheaper than the conventional roofing methods, which keeps it way cooler during summer times. All of those things you don't know because it's somewhere in Indonesia where people are using it. I know about it. I know the supplier who who manufactures uh, who manufactures it. He manufacturing it in the factory itself. Uh, my vision basically is for uh, sustainable homes to be affordable, right. uh, using alternative materials uh, which people lack in knowledge, um, making people aware that their buildings can be constructed in uh, not so traditional manners as well, uh, and still uh, more efficient and more cost effective and more. So, if you have that kind of a land. I can build you a property where you have a house which is powered by solar. You don't have to worry about electricity. But point being, you know, apart from the city, people have to start spreading out and you know buying property yeah, outside. Yeah, yeah. Small ones, small, cute, sustainable living homes. Small structures who have different sustainable floorings, like woven bamboo woven flooring. It is. It looks like wood. It feels like wood. It is. Just wood, you will think, but it is bamboo wo- uh, woven into wood. Yeah, that's because they uh, confuse procurement with contracting. Mm-hmm. Contract, I I wouldn't give a contractor material uh, uh, charge of materials and execution. I would exactly. give him material and ask him to execute it based on my materials, mm-hmm. not the materials. That everyone mm-hmm. conscious about that. Let it be the consumer. Let it be the supplier. Let it be the Developer, let it be the investor. The whole cycle is conscious about where they're going to be using the money. You guys are listening to the Bangalore Real Estate Podcast, a show where a couple of guys go on a journey to know more about the real estate market in Bangalore. It's primarily for investors, for home buyers, and also for the curious. Stick around because we're going to get a lot of interesting people and we're going to do some informative, educative and interesting stuff. Plus, if you want to learn something new, might as well keep listening. Well, the given uncertainty caused by the pandemic led us to realize to own uh, places and houses of our own. And that leads to a lot of people investing in areas around Bangalore, which means a lot of houses and a lot of places that people can call their own, right? Sustainable houses and affordable housing. How do you drive down the cost of a house? How do you bring it down with sustainable materials and great technology, modern technology? That's the theme here for the episode, guys. I've gotten someone over. His name is Ram. And uh, we dove a lot into sustainable materials. And uh, hopefully you guys get something out of it. And uh, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, learning new emerging markets with regarding to real estate and according to him you can drive down the cost of a house by procuring innovative sustainable materials the rest of the episode will begin shortly take care guys So, okay, okay. Uh, so, like, uh, let's rewind a bit. Like, uh, uh, what areas of like real estate do you uh, do you like, and have you un- what have you understood, and what uh, like give us like a bit of uh, introduction so that like uh, we uh, we understand what you like are interested in. Basically, a cyclic process as any other business. Right. And uh, what what what. Um, I realized is, uh, that in this cycle there are basically four people or parts involved. One would be the consumer like you, one would be the uh, project holder uh, or the owner uh, of the project, one would be the um, solution provider for the project and one would be the investor for the project. Mm-hmm. Some investors and the landowners are the same. Example is 
procurement of uh, building material uh-huh. mm. your main objective would to cut costs on transport of True. the supply to uh, to avoid your overheads like that if you like a particular material uh, which will be really cheap compared to a brick for example if i have a substitute of a brick and i want to buy a brick it's not just i can order it and uh, uh, it will be sent to the project site you have to calculate the transport involved and etc so first researching about uh, the region of procurement compared to the project site is very very important so what's your uh, so where do you see like the bangalore market with re- regarding to new and sustainable development that you are interested in as far as i know and like uh, like the uh, my vision basically is for uh, sustainable homes to be affordable right. uh, using alternative materials uh which people lack in knowledge um making people aware that their buildings can be constructed in uh, not so traditional manners as well uh and still uh, more efficient and more cost effective and more sustainable so these kind of things is what um uh, is what is my vision is so you must have said you have you do you think like people in bangalore are not yet completely have understood uh like the cost effectiveness or do, do they lack the knowledge of like sourcing it or how do you see that just about people more of a uh, um, uh, uh, very innovative uh, creative uh, city so the awareness is yeah. so you know, probably 20% to 80% 20% being people who are somewhere aware sustainable material and then 80% still not willing to even think about such things or what they think and that's so because like uh, usually what happens is like most of the consumers like 90% of them they go uh, they get their materials procured through contractors itself so basically they there aren't like uh, entirely mm-hmm. aware and these contractors have like a major margin like to them yeah that's because mm-hmm. they uh, confuse procurement with contracting so in fact i i wouldn't give a contractor material uh, 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 in charge of materials and execution i would exactly. give him material and ask him to execute it based on my materials mm-hmm. not the material but So uh, yeah, that's not like uh, people like awareness in this uh, area. Absolutely, don't tell this, but you know it's a home at the end of the day, and mm-hmm. a lot of families will be moving in there, or the owner itself. Yes. Okay. Skills, right? That you get over. How uh, how do you have a better viewpoint than somebody uh, who's getting? Is it sure your knowledge and your understanding on like the bigger market, and you've been in the scene for a while? Very, very that's the whole point of procurement right you'll be getting it at a efficient price yeah no it's more of uh, if you have a house in sanjay nagar that is being built yeah. you're going to look at people in uh, bangalore of how they have built their uh, uh, homes or uh-huh. maybe india maximum but you don't know what's happening in indonesia this new roofing material like called tax roofing that has come out which is way cheaper than the conventional roofing method which keeps it way cooler during summer times all of those things you don't know because it's somewhere in indonesia where people are using it i know about it i know the supplier who who manufactures uh, who manufactures it the manufacturing in the factory itself exactly so if i have like two three projects who are ready to take a patch roofing i can ask them to send it across and transport works out very well also uh-huh. in that way and since i'm getting it directly from indonesia with this manufacturer it's very very uh, you know cost effective like it it's mind boggling some of the uh, budget that they use for example uh, a flooring uh, uh, if you do tiles and you uh, brands like kajari or nitco or all that you're going to end up spending like let's say for example if i and apply on flooring right now i i have my contacts direct manufacturers who have different sustainable flooring like woven bamboo woven flooring it is it looks like wood it feels like wood it is just wood you will think but it is bamboo wo- uh, woven into wood okay and this comes direct from fm and i have the contact for that and this can probably be close at 2 lakhs for you like with ultimate finish 
I'm right. talking about like crazy finish. So right. two lakhs, I can get the job done of what you spent for flooring for uh, five and a half lakhs. Now the reason why people wouldn't expose you you to all of this is because what's the job of uh, contract for them? If you if you if you know have knowledge about all of this, how will they make money? I'm just being honest here. So also uh, Ram, can you tell us more about like the different things? Uh, that are available um, in terms of how the ma- market has still the Bangalore market hasn't still seen you say you do see a lot of like different uh, innovative stuff that is coming on board uh, I mean uh, in Bangalore all the projects will stop because all the neighbors are not available even if the promises were going to start the project again yeah. Uh, who, are, who, who are there? Who is there to even help them to start the projects? You know, neighbors have gone back to their towns and different areas. Different people are facing. But on the positive side, what I'm seeing, which is very rare to see the positive side during this uh, uh, pandemic situation and all of that, but somewhere out of hundred people that I talk to, uh, 98 people, of course, have a negative attitude when I when they pick up the phone itself. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's taboo to even ask them how business is doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. True. But you know, I still go ahead and ask them because, as we discussed earlier, Tarshat, you never know what yeah. the other person needs unless you ask them. Right? So I still go probe them. I get scolded a couple yeah. of times for asking the question, but out of nine hundred times. Two people actually come out of the blue and tell me business hasn't been, uh, you know, business has uh, never been this great. Right. So okay. That gives me hope uh, where uh, these kind of people are looking, uh, realizing that living in the city is not going to be really sustainable for their body and their health and their mental health and their physical health and whatever it is, the slower kind of realization might be happening in terms of people because of the pandemic. Where I can clearly see mindset uh, shifting towards outside Bangalore properties with a small farmhouse with self-sustaining 12 crops to 20 crops. Ah, brilliant. They have, they have self-sustaining things. So any pandemic that can happen, they can, uh, yeah. you know, you don't have to worry about food because crops are grown over there. Some have been sold also, some are exported, whatever you wish to do. Hmm. You don't have to worry about uh, basically your first circle of survival, which is your shelter, food, water, electricity, sustaining itself. Hmm. Uh, without paying electricity, you bills, you have to maintain anything. So you get to grow your own food and like your kids, the kids? Yeah, you grow your own food, you also sell some of the crops that you want to sell. That, uh, that depends on you or you have a separate, uh, maybe you have 50% of that land for your food consumption and selling the normal vegetables. Another 40% of the land, let's say uh, 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 an exotic uh, fruit to export, whatever it is, you know, we can work that out. But my point being, you know, apart from the city, people have to start spreading out and, you know, buying property yeah, outside. Yeah, yeah, small ones, small, cute, sustainable living homes. Small, <laughs> cute, sustainable, cheap living homes. So, Ram, I think, again, uh, from what the newspapers have been showing, people are actually searching for places in Tire 2, Tire 3 also. Yeah, that's true. Tire 2, Tire 3, it is uh, like, really like hot spots. Like, it's hot spots right now, right? right? Investors out there, like, I think it's the right time to... Invest in these tier two cities, like. Yeah, okay, with the newspaper. Too. Yeah, I feel like Kushalnagar has like a lot of scope. Like even Mysore, Mysore has been like growing. Um, yeah. Like cities like Mandya and all, like you know, these have like a lot of scope. I feel like you know, yeah. Bangalore, of course, is like expanding. Yeah, yeah. So it's expanding in such a rate that it's gonna affect these tier two cities as well. Yeah, yeah. Business. So, uh, Ram. Uh, Anything else that is interesting that you would want to let our listeners know? Uh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to know a lot of more interesting things because I've recently taken a project mm-hmm. in Kerala. Um, it huh. takes place to Vainad, uh, so it's for a family who wants me to build this sustainable home. This would be my first project. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be deciding if I'm going to be living in Kerala for a year, maybe a hundred uh, things from Bangalore itself. Oh. I haven't just decided. But um, what I'm planning to, uh, you know, gain from this experience is maximum exposure to uh, uh, right from scratch so I can understand this. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
and one side will be kind of a sample house would i mean this house it would be a sample in my portfolio to even show people what i can do right. so it's a constant opportunity for me uh, to go to uh, and this is the family has given me and they trust in me by giving me a particular budget in this and believing my word so obviously it's a question of their trust and it's a, it's a question of my vision and all of that so obviously i'm going to try to do my best and see how i can make the difference happen in, in one year i might know which i think well congratulations for making it to the tail end of the episode guys uh, that means you're really interested in learning more about real estate I hope you guys had fun and if you want to be part of the episode and if you have any suggestions just do reach out to us do message us wherever this episode is and I hope you have a great time and as usual keep on learning